In the past, it was just so common that you would get recommended to try requests and Beautiful Soup as a good solution for web scraping. But unfortunately, that just hasn't moved with the times and it's just not the same thing that it used to be. Now, don't get me wrong, there's nothing wrong with requests. And in fact, if I'm working with an actual structured API that I have a key for, I usually use it. But for web scraping, you're gonna find you're quickly gonna get blocked by very simple things which are very easily avoidable if you use these other tools that I'm gonna talk about. Now in this video, I'm going to show you what they are and how you can use them, how they look like with more modern Python so you can improve your web scrapers and get blocked a lot less. So I'm John, I've been web scraping for five or six years now. Um, I've scraped millions of rows of data for various people all over the world. And this is one of the methods that I would use in the right situation for the right circumstance. So if we take a look at this website here, we can see we have like a shop page and then there's a product page that goes with it. Now, one thing that I want to note before we have a look at the actual code is that within this, there is this application LD plus JSON, which holds a load of the information which I would be very interested in having. Now, what's important with about this is that if we go to a JSON parser and paste it in here, is that this has a list of elements, a list of products, URL, a list of products, which has a list of URLs. So now that we know that, we can start to think about how we want to get this data. Now, obviously, because we're going to use slice proxies and modern Python, we can lean into async, which is something that you couldn't do with requests. So if I come over here and I activate my virtual environment, and if we have a look at this code here, so this is a simple kind of like requests style piece of code. All I'm doing here is I'm creating a client, I'm creating a session. A lot of people don't do this, and if you all if you are in one of those camps where you don't create clients or sessions, you need to start doing it because it's gonna it's so much better, so much easier to use and manage. Anyway, all I'm gonna do is try and get a couple of URLs from this site. So I come out of this and I'm gonna do UV run uh, requests main. Now, if you're not using UV yet, you really should be. It's really good. UV in it for a new project, fantastic. You can see right over here, we've got 403s blocked. You can't get through, and that's with a good user agent, it's with good proxies, so it's not gonna give. But if I was to do this one and I run the main.py file, I've got a few shop URLs in here, and we'll see that I'm getting a load of URLs, and I'm now gonna reach out and get all of these asynchronously, and we're gonna get all the data back. I think this is something like 80 something products that we're gonna get. Now what I have done here is I've actually put a limiter in because I don't wanna to do too many requests in one go, but this will actually run through all of these, and in about a minute or so, we would end up with the data that we wanted that would look something like this. So we can see that we've scraped all of the information from those products uh, that were on that shop page. Now this is very useful to us. So let's have a look at the code and we'll explain and we'll go through and we'll, and we'll talk about the main points that are the most useful. So the first thing that we're gonna do is we are going to create our client. This is a little bit more important than it was before because we wanna bake our proxies in and we wanna bake in the impersonate. Now the impersonate is gonna be the TLS fingerprint that we're gonna send with all of our requests. And this is going to give us that little bit extra credibility when we're making those requests to the site and it's gonna allow us access. Without this TLS fingerprint, we're really gonna to struggle to um, get uh, past and get get not get those 403s that we saw with requests because of the way that the fingerprinting works and this is run a lot through many different Cloudflare sites. So what I'm doing here is I'm finding my proxy in my virtual environment and then I'm adding it and I'm creating a client with Arnet. Arnet is my favorite at the moment. It's built in Rust and it's written by a guy who who contributes a lot to the Rust community. So I've got a, I'm hoping that it stays updated and relevant. Plus I found that the impersonation with this one works very well and it's very easy to use and, and use asynchronously. So this is our create client function. The next one we wanna move on to is to look at actually fetching the URLs from the page. Now, this is where it's important where we looked at this because we know that we're gonna have a large chunk of URLs in a uh, list that we can get from accessing just one page. Now I'm gonna do this asynchronously. So I have this function here, which is going to uh, use the client uh, that I've created. It's gonna take in a list and it's gonna use this limiter, which is what I mentioned just briefly. It's up to you whether you wanna use this or not. And it's gonna return a list of responses and you can do this all asynchronously. And what we can do here is we can just create these tasks with our client that we are going to create for each URL. From here, I wanted to think about passing the responses. Now the response on the list page is 
uh, going to be one chunk of JSON data that I'm going to need to pull the URLs out of. But the response on the actual product page, which has most of the information, looks a little bit like this. And if I copy this over here and put this in, we can see that there's you know a load more information. It's got images. It's got everything. So this is kind of like we want to decide, we want to determine which piece of information we're, we're on per page to actually you know, send it in the right direction. Now I put this all together in one function, but in hindsight I think I should have split this up. So let me know if you think that's the case too. So I'm going to create a blank URLs list and I'm using selectalax to pass. Now we only need to pass the HTML to grab one small script tag and selectalax has been my go-to parser for a long time. And if you check out the GitHub page, he's put a link to one of my videos on there, which I'm secretly really proud of, so I appreciate that. We're going to find the JSON in this LD JSON tag. Very common schema. Lots of websites use this. This should be one of the first places you look to see if it has the data that you need. Now I'm going to loop through all of these because there are going to be multiple on the page. I'm looking for certain things in the text. This is what I mentioned just a minute ago. So with this item list, I know that I'm having a list of items so this is a store page not a product page so we can work through it like this and we can find the elements append the urls to our list and return that list of urls out of this function but if it's not if it's a product page we're going to find this word product in the json data then i can just return the whole thing because i know this is a product i want everything i'm going to return none if any of these cases don't happen. Um, and then we're going to start on our main function where everything is going to happen. Now, this is the rate limiter that I use. It's an async rate, rate limiter based on using semaphores. It's just an easier way for me to write it rather than have to do it myself. I can just do this and wrap the function and it works just fine. So I'm creating my rate limiter here and you can see that I use it limiter.wrap on this client.get here just to you know, manage the amount of requests that I do. Then these are the shop URLs. I've got some commented out because I was just working on this. Uh, and then I have a results. Now we're going to create our client and ask for our responses, again, asynchronously. And then we're going to go through them. So we're just going to go through them one by one. And we're going to check the status code because I want to know that these are working. Then I'm going to see for product URLs, we're going to find any there are there. And I'm going to say if there's none, you can see this function here, if it returns no URLs, then we've got nothing there and we move on. Otherwise, we find the URLs. Again, get the responses for those URLs all asynchronously, limited again, and then get the product data from them and append that to our list of product data. All I'm going to do now is just quickly save the results into a JSON file, which is what I showed you earlier. Now, if we zoom out a little bit and take a bit more of an overview of this, this is going to look quite different to the standard style of request and beautiful sweep code that you've seen probably written uh, a lot in the older style tutorials. Now, there's nothing wrong with that way of writing code. But what is wrong is you're really going to struggle with practicing those methods if you aren't using these modern tools and modern Python. I really do think it's something that we need to, as a community, really push forward and say, look, you know, there's Request and Beautiful Soup has its place, but these tools are outdated in the world of web scraping. So I just wanted to show you, this is what I would do for a simple script. And having the impersonate here, whichever browser you choose, I choose Firefox, is definitely gonna get you in a better chance of getting through and getting the access to the data that you want to get. Now this is an overview, but if you want to see me scrape data, more data like this, uh, and show you how I can actually work with it on more of on in a real world example, then you want to click this video right here.